During this video, we're going to talk about dendroclimatology. Now, you might be thinking that this word is really big and scary and might be really confusing. However, if you break this word down into its smaller parts, you already know most of what we're going to be talking about. Well, let's start with the easy stuff. Ology, well, what does that mean? Hopefully you said the study of, just like biology is the study of life. Climate, well, you know what climate is. This is just a description of the average weather conditions in an area over an extended period of time. Now, the tricky part is dendro. What do you suppose that means? Well, dendro comes from the Greek root meaning dendros, which just means tree. So if you put it all together, dendroclimatology is just the study of the average weather conditions in an area using trees. See, you already knew most of it. The next question is, well, how can trees tell a scientist that the climate has changed? Where would a scientist have to look or investigate in a tree to figure out if climate has changed? Well, hopefully you're, you're thinking of the tree rings. Trees do not grow at the same constant rate throughout the year. Sometimes they grow a lot in a short period of time, and sometimes they don't. Other times they might stop growing altogether. Living in Minnesota, you should understand that. Our year can be very tough on plants. Going from nice rainy conditions in the spring to being frozen in the winter is very difficult. We can see these seasonal growth changes in the color and thickness of these rings. During late spring and early summer, the trees produce a light colored ring that is usually thicker. Well, why is it thicker? Well, that is usually the time of the year when we have enough sunlight, water, and nutrients for plants to grow the most. During late summer and fall, conditions change to less sunlight and drier conditions. This is reflected in the tree rings. During this time, trees produce narrow, dark rings indicating little growth. Finally, trees go dormant in the winter, producing no ring at all. Now, I'm sure all of you or most of you have counted tree rings to figure out how old trees are. Hopefully, you counted both the dark and the light rings together to count as one year or one growing season. Now if you zoom in and take a look at uh, the plant cells, you can see a difference between early and late growth. Early on, the cells are rather large and have thinner cell walls. During late summer and fall time though, the cells uh, get much smaller and have to produce thicker cell walls. This creates the darker color for the late summer, fall time. Now on the slides, you can see many different examples of tree rings. Has climate changed for all of these trees? Take a look. If you answered yes, well, how can you tell? The nice thing about tree rings is that they show you how the growing season went for every year the tree was alive. Tree rings can indicate temperature, length of the growing season, and possibly the amount of nutrients available for that particular growing season. Thicker tree rings may indicate a longer growing season or maybe higher water availability. Now if you're a dendroclimatologist, a guy that studies trees, tree rings to figure out how climate has changed, you really need to understand your tree species because each individual species of tree has its own temperature and precipitation requirements. Interestingly, tree rings can also indicate very brief events in climate history, like floods, uh, droughts, fires, and what I think is pretty cool is insect attacks, like the current insect attack that we're having here in Minnesota uh, due to a bug called the emerald ash borer. What they're doing is they're killing all of the ash trees here in Minnesota. 
Now, as I stated earlier, tree rings can also indicate changes in temperature. Thicker tree rings might indicate warmer climates or warmer than normal climates, whereas thinner tree rings might indicate cooler than normal conditions. Now, there's a couple ways to actually study tree rings. One is this first one, studying the entire cross section, so the entire tree stump. And usually, that's done after the tree dies. Or, if you can't wait, um, like you can see this guy doing right now, he takes a core sample taken on living trees. It's just a small cylinder that goes into the tree and then they pull out the core. It doesn't harm the tree at all. It usually just kind of fills in the hole as it grows and then we can get the data right away. In your notes, you have the exact same diagram that you're seeing right now. Please pause the video and draw arrows to the places where you think the tree rings indicate a warmer climate and colder climates. Make sure you label the arrows. So this arrow right here, I said indicates a warmer time frame because the grow the lighter rings are thicker. And then I said over here would be a cooler than normal condition uh, because those tree rings are uh, thinner. Definitely other places in here that have warmer and cooler. These are just the ones that I picked out. Now, based on the data we have right now on the screen, would you say climate has changed? Why would you say so? Has the climate changed for this tree? What does this mean about the conditions it grew in? Has it gotten colder, drier, wetter, warmer, longer, shorter growing season? Well, you should kind of see that we have thicker than normal, or thicker rings here, very thin rings here. So climate has definitely changed for this tree, but can we exactly say if it got cooler or drier or warmer, wetter, longer season? Uh, we can't know that without actually knowing the tree species. All right, that's the video for dendroclimatology, guys. Watch it as many times as you need.